Nat says she'd like to hear what words, uh, what do you do if a dog has a brown discharge, a dog is 42 days pregnant, got a sticky brown discharge, it's a temperature of 37.9 centigrade, it must be in Europe, eating like a champ but wouldn't drink. <clears throat> we found out that the vet, the goo had turned solid blocking her from peeing, he was stumped over uh, okay, well, I know what it is. It's, it's uh, <laughs> the vet didn't know. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it's it's a mucus plug. So what goes on is dogs <clears throat> when they get pregnant, a mucus plug forms on the entrance of the cervix to stop bacteria and other muck getting up into the uterus. And as the pregnancy goes on, the, the uterus, the cervix starts to dilate, and when it opens up enough, that little plug falls out, and it's a kind of a gooey substance that you might see hanging off the back end of your dog. Completely normal. Um, and you know, it can drop out, you don't see it, it can drop out 10 days beforehand, which is what you've kind of got going on here. It can drop out <clears throat> within a few hours of birth or not at all. And it's not a problem. And the reason it's brown discharge, there's a bit of blood in there as well. So not, not a problem. Uh, okay, Katie Clunk. I have a cream, actually a blue covered in cream with red eye glow. So does that mean that she has untestable chocolate in her DNA? Um, well, okay. <clears throat> You've got to be careful about red eye glow. <clears throat> Excuse me. So cream dogs could be lots of other colors underneath, including merle. If this was a merle dog, then it would have a red eye glow and it wouldn't be significant for having either version of chocolate. But if it's not been bred to a merle, then it's not a merle dog. And if it has a continuous red eye glow, not fleeting, but a continuous red eye glow, then that dog has either <clears throat> little b, little b, testable chocolate, or little co, little co, cocoa, or both together. But if that dog had a single copy, I need to get myself a ripe off the board. <clears throat> if that dog was this, one copy, or one copy of that, it would not have a red eye glow. So red eye glow, as long as it's not a merle dog, a red eye glow, and it needs to be continuous red eye glow, it means you've got yourself a chocolate dog. Uh, somebody's asking about flat chest. Um, Demientera asks about a flat chest. Can a flat chest on a puppy at seven weeks old be healed? Yes, but it's harder. But yeah, absolutely. So, <clears throat> you know, there's a, there's a number of reasons for a, for, for a flat chest. One is, is that it's a walrus puppy. It's laying down. It's not getting up. I don't think that's the situation in your dog. But if that was the case, you'd take the back legs up. But if it's got a flat chest and it is walking around properly, get one of those prosthetics and get that on the dog. Uh, mate Rodriguez, my dog's got sick from a litter she had and got low calcium and the vet told me to separate puppies. Now her bo boobs are swollen. Um, how do I help her from an infection? I'd get her back to nursing. I'd get her back with a puppy's nursing on her. So what you should have done is given calcium and if it's bad enough, given in, an IV of calcium uh, to bring her calcium levels back up and then get her back nursing with her puppies. Um, because otherwise, if you don't do that, you're going to have to drain them manually by hand, aspirate them by hand. Uh, otherwise, she's going to get mastitis. Alfonso Lopez, do you AI back to back or one day and then a day after? Typically, I like to do it a day after. It depends on the numbers. So on an IDEX machine, which is what most of the vets have, IDEX, I like to do an AI at 15 and then two days later, the day after, two days later, and make sure the number's, you know, 20 plus and you're good to go. If the dog was already at a 20, I'd do it two days in a row. On a fine care machine, it's a bit higher. On a fine care machine, I start doing it at 17, and I want to do the second one to make sure I'm at 25 or higher. If you're already at a 20, I'd do it two days in a row. Uh, Kelly Hester, I've been watching your videos for a while now. I need some advice. I took my female on yesterday for an ultrasound to confirm pregnancy at day 38. Um, they weren't able to see anything. They did a progesterone test and it was nine. That's kind of weird. The reason it's weird is because um, with a dog, <clears throat> if you look at progesterone levels, regardless of whether a dog was bred or not, the progesterone level should be up there and high. So what you normally see if you look to the graph of progesterone level 
versus number of days, the progesterone level should look like this, and it should stay like that for the entire pregnancy, which is about 70, well, 61 days thereabouts. So you had a progesterone, and that would be you know, 30 plus, and you've got a progesterone level that is nine. So that is a dog that's somewhere down here. So um, I think what's, yeah, I don't know what's going on with this dog. I can tell you this, if you don't keep the progesterone level up, then, the, then she will lose her puppies. So that may be what's going on here. And if you have a history of this, she may need artificial progesterone given to her to keep her progesterone level up. But I, you said you're going to do an x-ray at day 50. I would and find out what's going on. L.U. Bonisle asks, do you ship Rottweiler semen out of the country? I don't ship Rottweiler semen, period. I just ship uh, Frenchy semen. Bianca Bedola says, hey, can you do a video on what to feed pregnant mums? Thank you. So what we feed is Bill Jack. Bill Jack. And that is in the frozen, it's a frozen food. And I buy it from Walmart. It's in the human frozen section. And you have to be east of the Rockies to be able to find that. If you're west of the Rockies, California and the likes, you will not find it. But it's not the only thing to feed. There's plenty of good, high quality, high protein foods. What you want to feed is a high protein food to a pregnant dog. Lorenzo Wiley. Can a PG level of 11 go down to a 5? Absolutely. I tested my female at 4223. She was a 6. Two days later, I tested again. She was a 5. Tested again later, she was at 11. AI to the next day. Uh, how do I get the range for C-section? Okay. So two questions there. So the first thing is, it, I see this a lot, especially in younger dogs. And when I say younger dogs, dogs that are a year to a year and a half old where they do this, here's the progesterone level. This is days. <clears throat> this is start of breeding, day one. Most dogs, day nine, are about a level of five. This is in nanograms <clears throat> per milliliter. It'd be three times that amount in Europe. <clears throat> All right, so most dogs aren't doing much for about five days, then they start rising up, and they get to a progesterone level of five, day nine, and then they really start to go up. So we call this ovulation, and we want to be breeding on about a 15, which is about two days later. Right. But what happens is, you think you're in the right place. You did a progesterone level, in your case, of a 5. So the doc says, oh, she's ovulated, breed her in two days. But you come back and do a progesterone level, and she finds she's doing this. She hasn't risen up. This is what's called a prolonged heat. Sometimes it goes down, and then that would be a split heat, and then it starts back up again. So what do you do? You keep testing, and what I do is, so you don't run into too much money, I'll test every, well, I'll wait. If I'm tested and it's, she's less than a five, I'll, I'll test her again when her blood color has started to lighten up. And basically, you need to get to a level of 15 tested to, to do an AI that's gonna be successful. So how do you, how do you um, time the C-section? Well, if you know when she was a 15, you count 61 days from that, and that's when you expect her to have a, a whelp. That's expected whelp. The problem is, in these dogs, it can be a bit variable, so you can be a bit sketchy on what this number is. Go look at my video, Don't Lose Puppies, and you'll find out what you should be doing. But basically, you need to be taking a temperature, watching her behavior, and if you're unclear, then you go get a progesterone test done at this point here and make sure the number is a, around three or less. And if you're in those numbers, you're safe to do a C-section. So it can make it a bit harder, but always, remember always, in my book anyway, you don't schedule C-sections. It's a window of opportunity. You make sure you've got the right signs, which are things like a temperature drop below 99, PG level of less than three or less, not eating food, nesting or panting. Someone's saying that we're a gorgeous couple. Thank you. Jokes aside, I guess that was just a, <laughs> that, was, that wasn't real. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, thank you for positive energy and price information. Well, you're welcome. Derek Rose. Here's a good one for you. Is it true a dog can get pregnant when mating naturally, but they don't tie? No. <laughs> I mean, no. No. Without a physical tie... You know, 
the seam has got to get in the dog if it's spilled on the ground or it just splashed against the back end that is not going to end up with a pregnancy so but remember unless you're there all the time you may have missed the actual time uh, thanks for watching the video i hope you got some good information out of it i hope you subscribe to our channel brought to you by mybreedersupply.com we've been in business for over eight years we manufacture products to help you have successful breedings successful whelps and successful puppies. We've introduced a new subscription service, canineconnect.com. It's a one year subscription for 129 bucks. And for that, you get two day free shipping on all, all of your orders. You get 5% off your every order that you place and you get direct access to our support line to help you with products that you buy from us and general questions about breeding your dogs. It's really a great deal. I hope you subscribe to that. Now the disclaimer, I'm not a licensed veterinarian, I'm not a professional health giver, but I am a guy that's been breeding dogs successfully for over 20 years. Any information you get from my videos is purely at your own risk. If you have any doubts about any of this stuff, you should definitely seek the help of a licensed professional. Again, thanks for watching. Have fun with your doggies. Bye, buddy. Mm -hmm.